Madhulila, chapter 26. O Lord Chaitanya, O auspiciousness of the worlds, glory, glory unto you. O Lord, please place in my heart the gift of your two feet. One day, Lord Chaitanya mercifully begged food from Suklambar Brahmachari. The Lord said, I have a strong desire to eat food that you offer. Don't be afraid. What I tell you is my firm decision. Again and again, Lord Chaitanya spoke in this way. Hearing this, Sukhlambar, in a voice choked with emotion, said, I am a beggar, a lowly degraded condemned sinner. You are the eternal religion personified, and I am fallen. O oh Lord, when will you give me the shade of your feet? I am not as good as a worm or an insect. You are only playing a big trick on me. Lord Chaitanya said, Please do not think in your heart that this is a trick. I feel a strong desire for your cooking. Go quickly and prepare an offering to the Lord. I will come at midday today. Still, Suklambar was frightened at heart. He asked the devotees what he should do. They all said, Why are you afraid? The truth is that he is not different from the Supreme Personality of Godhead himself. He always tries to eat food offered by persons who worship him with love. He begged food from Vidura, who was the Sudra's son. He did that because of Vidura's devotion. The Lord begs food from his devotees and eats what they offer. That is his nature. You go home, prepare an elaborate meal, and offer it to him with love. If you still feel fear in your heart, then don't touch anything while you cook. You are very fortunate that the Lord is so kind to you. Hearing these words, the Brahmin happily returned to his home. After bathing, Suklambar carefully heated some scented water. He cooked rice with splendid garba koda. Not touching anything as he cooked, the Brahmin folded his hands. Jai Krishna Govinda Gopal Vanamali, Sukumbar happily chanted. At that moment, Goddess Lakshmi, who was very devoted to her husband and who is the mother of the worlds, glanced at the devotee's food. At that moment, the food became the sweetest nectar. After his bath, Lord Chaitanya came there. He came with Nichananda and some other associates. Lord Chaitanya changed out of his wet clothing. Hungry, the Lord happily glanced at Suklambar. The house was near the Ganga. Then the food was very happily offered to Lord Vishnu. Smiling, Lord Chaitanya sat down and happily ate. Filling his eyes, he glanced at his servants. Lord Chaitanya, who eats what Brahma and the demigods offer in yagnas, now ate the food offered by Suklambar. It is very difficult to become fortunate like Suklambar. Lord Chaitanya said, From the time of my birth, I have never tasted any food more delicious than this. How delicious is this garbakota? I cannot describe it. How, not even touching it, did you cook food like this? You are one of my friends. Friends like you are the root from which I grow. Lord Chaitanya cast a glance of mercy at Suklambar. All the devotees wept. Again and again the Lord relished the food in this way. Filled with bliss, he ate. The non-devotee sinner millionaires should see the mercy the beggar Suklambar attained. By wealth, followers, and material learning, one does not attain Lord Chaitanya. The Supreme Lord is conquered by the nectar of devotional service. This is what the Vedas say. The Lord sat and lovingly ate. Then smiling and smiling, the Lord chewed betel nuts. Accepting the remnants from the Lord's plate, the devotees, overcome with bliss, forgot everything else. Brahma, Shiva, and Ananta Shesh would respectfully place that plate to their heads. How much bliss there was in that beggar's home. In this way, Lord Chaitanya happily enjoyed pastimes. After some time spent in talking about Lord Krishna, 
Lord Chaitanya lay down for a nap. The devotees also lay down for a nap. Then, one in their midst saw a great wonder. Sri Vijay Das was one of the Lord's students. That great soul then saw something of the Lord's glories and opulences. No one in Navadweep wrote as gracefully as he. He personally copied many books for Lord Chaitanya. Everyone called him Vijay the penman. Still, because they had no devotion, most people did not understand his heart. As he lay down, Lord Chaitanya rested his hand on Vijaya's body. Vijaya suddenly saw many great wonders. He saw the Lord's hand suddenly become like a great lofty pillar. Then he saw the Lord was covered with jeweled ornaments. Then he saw many jeweled rings on the Lord's fingers. With the splendor of how many millions of suns and moons did those jewels glisten, he did not know. Seeing Lord Chaitanya's effulgent hand spread everywhere, even up to the demigod Brahma, Vijaya rejoiced. On seeing all this, Vijaya suddenly called out. Lord Chaitanya then placed his graceful hand over Vijaya's mouth. Lord Chaitanya said, For as many days as I am here, don't tell anyone of this. Speaking these words, the Lord smiled and glanced at Vijaya. Vijay jumped up and roared. Vijay's roar awakened the devotees. They tried to hold Vijay still. No one could hold him. For some moments, Vijay was like a madman. At the end, he fainted in ecstasy. The devotees knew Vijay must have seen some wonder. Everyone wept. The Lord asked everyone, what did he say? Suddenly, Vijay began to scream. Then the Lord said, I think it must be the power of the Ganga. Vijay was very devoted to the Ganga. Or perhaps not, perhaps it is because of the deities in Sukhlambara's home. Or perhaps Vijay saw Lord Krishna. After speaking these words, Lord Chaitanya placed his hand on Vijay's body. Vijay suddenly regained consciousness. All the Vaishnavas smiled. Rising up, Vijay was stunned like an inanimate object. For seven days he wandered Nadia like that. He did not eat, he did not sleep, he ignored his body. In this way Vijay wandered about. No one understood his heart. After some days, Vijay returned to external consciousness. These wonderful pastimes happened in Sukhlambar's home. Who has the power to describe Sukhlambar's good fortune? Lord Chaitanya personally accepted the food he cooked. Accompanied by his associates, Lord Chaitanya enjoyed these pastimes in fortunate Sukhlambar's home. Simply by hearing these pastimes of the Lord's eating Sukhlambar's cooking and giving mercy to Vijay, one attains the great treasure of pure devotional service. In this way, Lord Chaitanya, before whom all the Vedas bow down, always enjoyed pastimes in Navadweep. Accompanied by Nityananda, Lord Chaitanya enjoyed pastimes like this every day in the homes of each of the Vaishnavas. Lord Chaitanya was always agitated by tasting the nectar of ecstatic love. In this way, he manifested his different natures. He manifested the natures of Matsya, Kurma, Nisringha, Varaha, Vamana, Ramachandra, Buddha, Kalki, and Krishna. He manifested the natures of all these avatars. On the pretext of being in ecstasy, the Lord manifested all these forms. Each of them he manifested and then hid. For many days he would not stop the nature of Lord Balaram. Entering the nature of Lord Balaram, he became as if wildly intoxicated. Bring wine, bring wine, he screamed. Understanding the Lord's mood, Nichananda filled a cup with Ganga water and respectfully offered it to the Lord. The Lord screamed and roared. Because of that roar, Navadweep and every other place in the three worlds trembled. Then the Lord danced wildly and the whole earth seemed to break into pieces. The earth and all the universe was thrown into chaos. Seeing the Lord's dancing, all the devotees became afraid. Everyone sang songs describing Lord Balaram. Hearing these songs, Lord Chaitanya was overcome with bliss. Swaying and staggering like an intoxicated person, Lord Chaitanya wandered in the courtyard. How handsome was Lord Chaitanya in the mood of Balaram. Gazing and gazing at him, the devotees no longer felt any of the troubles of this world. Everyone gazed at his indescribable moonlike face. Very loudly he called, Nityananda, Nityananda. Sometimes Lord Chaitanya would return to external consciousness. He told everyone, my life breath is leaving me. Lord Chaitanya then said, O oh, Father Krishna, your elder brother Balaram hit me, and you always protected me. After speaking these words, Lord Chaitanya fell into a trance. Seeing all this, the frightened devotees loudly wept. 
The Lord enjoyed these very wonderful pastimes. Lord Chaitanya, the son of Jagannath Mishra, danced in many different moods. Sometimes Lord Chaitanya felt the mood of separation. At those times he was plunged in an indescribable and very wonderful ocean of love. At those times Lord Chaitanya cried out and wept. Hearing him, the numberless worlds broke into pieces. Forgetting who he was, Lord Chaitanya became wild with love for a person that was actually himself. Previously, the gopis, overcome with feelings of separation, feared they would die when the moon rose. Accepting the gopis' mood, Lord Chaitanya held the devotees' necks and wept. Seeing Lord Chaitanya overcome with ecstatic love in this way, Sachi, the mother of the worlds, wept at home. How can a mere human being have the power to describe these manifestations of Lord Chaitanya's wonderful ecstatic love and devotion? Accepting different moods, Lord Chaitanya would dance in different ways day after day. One day, Lord Chaitanya, the master of the universe, accepted the mood of the gopis. He then chanted Vrindavan and Gopi, Gopi, without stop. Not understanding the heart of the Lord's ecstasy, one of his students approached him and said, O oh, Nimai Pandit, why do you chant Gopi Gopi? Stop chanting Gopi Gopi. Instead, chant Krishna at once. What piety will be born by chanting Gopi Gopi? Chanting Krishna's name brings piety. The Vedas say so. The foolish student did not understand Lord Chaitanya's different ecstatic moods. Lord Chaitanya gave this reply. Krishna is a thief. Who would worship him? He is an ingrate. He killed Vali, even though Vali did nothing wrong. He is a debauchee conquered by women. He once cut off a woman's nose and ears. He robbed Maharaj Bali of all his wealth and threw him down to Patalaloka. What will I gain if I chant this Krishna's name? After speaking these words, Lord Chaitanya, still wrapped in ecstasy, took a stick in his hand and ran after the student to beat him. The student jumped up and fled calling out, Stop! Stop! Lord Chaitanya chased him. Seeing the angry Lord, stick in hand, chasing him, the bewildered student fled. The student could not understand Lord Chaitanya's different ecstatic moods. Fearing for his life, the student ran away. Frantically running, the devotees caught and grabbed the Lord. Gathering around him, they all pacified the Lord while the frightened student ran far away. Breathing heavily and his body covered with perspiration, the student ran to the other students. The students asked the reason of his fear. The student replied, Why ask? Today I am lucky still to be alive. Everyone says Nimai Pandit is a great saint. So today I went to his house to see him. I saw him sitting down and chanting Japa of Gopi Gopi day and night. He did not chant anything else. I said to him, Pandit, what are you doing? You should chant Krishna, Krishna. This is what the scriptures say. Hearing these words, he became aflame with anger. To beat me with a stick in his hand, he chased after me. Again and again, he blasphemed Lord Krishna. I have no power to place those blasphemies in my mouth. Somehow I saved my life. That is why I can speak to you today. Hearing all this, the foolish students laughed. Then they spoke what was in their hearts. One student said, the people say he is a good Vaishnav, but he angrily chases a Brahmin to beat him? Another said, If he does not chant Lord Krishna's names, how can he be a Vaishnav? Another said, What I have heard is very strange. A Vaishnav who chants only Gopi Gopi? Another said, Why should we be respectful to him? Do we not also have Brahminical power? He may be a Brahmin. Are we not Brahmins also? If he attacks us, why should we tolerate it? He is not the king. Why should he punish us? We should all gather together. If he attacks us again, we should not tolerate it. He may be the son of Jagannath Mishra and Navad Weep, but we are not the sons of ordinary men either. Yesterday we all studied together. Why should this fellow all of a sudden become the big master? In this way the sinners express their opinions. Lord Chaitanya, who is the super soul in the hearts of all, knew all they said. One day, Lord Chaitanya sat down with his associates around him in the four directions. Suddenly, he said something unusual. No one understood its meaning. Everyone was startled. He said, The medicine Papalikanda was prepared to cure excess mucus, but it had the opposite effect. The mucus only increased. Saying these words, 
Lord Chaitanya, the master of all the worlds, loudly laughed. No one knew why the Lord spoke these words. Fear was born in everyone. Nityananda knew the Lord's heart. He thought, soon the Lord will leave home. Aware that Lord Chaitanya would accept sannyas, Nityananda became plunged in grief. Thinking of how Lord Chaitanya would become a shaven-headed sannyasi, Nityananda felt his life breath attacked by grief. The next moment, Lord Chaitanya grasped Nityananda's hand, took him to a secluded place and sat down with him. Lord Chaitanya said, Saintly Nityananda, please listen. I will tell my heart to you. I came here to deliver the world. It has not become delivered. Now it seems that I have come here to destroy the world. How is their material bondage becoming destroyed? I see that where there was one rope of material bondage, now there are millions of ropes. Now they have decided to beat me. That means they will enter into complete bondage. I descended to this place to deliver the world, but now it seems that I must kill everyone here. Look, tomorrow I will shave my hair and take away my sacred thread. Becoming a sannyasi, I will go begging. I will travel from place to place. Tomorrow I will be a beggar at the doors of the people who now want to beat me. Seeing me, they will respectfully grasp my feet. In this way, I will deliver all the worlds. Everyone bows down before a sannyasi. No one will attack a sannyasi. Tomorrow I will become a sannyasi. I will beg from every house. I will see who will then attack me. I have told you my heart. I will renounce householder life, that is certain. Please don't be unhappy at heart because of this. Please give me permission to accept sannyas. I will do whatever you say. You know why I descended to this world. Therefore, please give me permission. If you wish to deliver the world, then please do not forbid me. Please don't be unhappy, even for a moment. You know why I descended to this world. Hearing that Lord Chaitanya's hair would be gone, Nityananda felt his heart, mind, body, and life breath become ripped to shreds. What would Nityananda say? No words came to his mouth. In his heart he thought, the Lord will do it. No one can stop him. Nityananda said, Lord, your wish is always fulfilled. Lord, whatever you wish will certainly happen. Who has the power to order you to do anything or forbid you to do anything? Whatever is in your heart must be the spiritual truth. You are the protector of everyone. You are the master of everyone. Whatever you decide is good. Lord, you know what should be done to deliver the world. Who else knows? You are completely independent. Whatever you do is full of bliss. Whatever you decide will certainly be. Still, please tell this to all your servants. Please hear what they will say. Then you may do whatever you wish. Who has the power to thwart your will? Pleased by Nityananda's words, Lord Chaitanya embraced him again and again. Accepting this advice, Lord Chaitanya went with Nityananda to the assembly of Vaishnavas. Nityananda thought, the Lord will renounce his home. Externally, Nityananda did not manifest anything. His whole body was numb. Stunned, Nityananda thought in his heart, after the Lord has left, how will Mother Sachi remain alive? How will Mother Sachi pass the time, her days and nights? Thinking in this way, noble-hearted Nityananda fell unconscious. Thinking of how Mother Sachi would suffer, Lord Nityananda went to a secluded place and repeatedly wept. Meanwhile, Lord Chaitanya went to Mukunda's home. Seeing the Lord, Mukunda became joyful. Lord Chaitanya said, Sing a song about Lord Krishna's auspicious glories. Mukunda sang. Listening, Lord Chaitanya was agitated with ecstatic love. Listening to saintly Mukunda's splendid voice, Lord Chaitanya, the jewel of the Brahmins, roared, Sing, sing. After some moments, stopping his ecstasy, Lord Chaitanya conversed with Mukunda. Lord Chaitanya said, Mukunda, please hear my words. I will leave. I will not stay here. I will definitely renounce household life. I will shave my hair and travel from one place to another. Hearing that the Lord would shave his hair, Mukunda, overwhelmed by thoughts of separation, fell to the ground. All his joy was now destroyed. With a voice trembling with emotion, Mukunda begged, Lord, if that is your wish, you will do it without fail. Please stay like this for a few more days and perform kirtan here. After that, O oh Lord, do what is in your heart. After hearing Mukunda's words, Lord Chaitanya went to Gadadhar. 
Gadahar respectfully offered obeisances to the Lord's feet. Lord Chaitanya said, Please hear my words. Gadadhar, I will not stay at home. I will go wherever Lord Krishna orders. I will not keep my hair. I will shave my head and go in one direction or another. Hearing that the Lord would shave his hair, Gadadhar felt as if a thunderbolt had fallen on his head. Unhappy at heart, Gadadhar said, Lord, your words are very strange. Merely by shaving his hair can anyone attain Lord Krishna? Why can you not remain as a householder and a Vaishnav? By shaving your head, will you gain some religious benefit? Obviously, you think that you will. The Vedas do not hold that opinion. How can you abandon your widowed mother? From the first, you will be responsible for your mother's death. If you go, she will not stay alive. You are all she has left. You are her life. Is the Supreme Lord not pleased by devotees who stay in their homes? A householder is pleasing to everyone. If you still wish to shave your head, then do it and go away from this place. In this way, Lord Chaitanya visited the different Vaishnavs one after another and told them all, I will shave my hair. Hearing that the Lord would shave his hair, each one of them fell down. Consciousness did not stay in their bodies. Thinking of how Lord Chaitanya would shave his hair, all the devotees wept. Someone said, how will we place flower garlands on his graceful curly hair? Another said, if I cannot see his neatly tied hair, how will I be able to maintain this sinful life? Saying, never again will I smell the splendid fragrance of his hair, another beat his head. Another said, will I ever again anoint his graceful hair with amalak? Calling out, Hari, Hari, everyone loudly wept. The devotees were drowning in an ocean of grief. Sri Krishna Chaitanya and Nichananda Prabhu are my life and soul. I, Vrindavan Das, humbly offer this song at their lotus feet. <laughs>